that's the lock pretty much on. I'm just going to add a filler just to keep it proud so that it locks easily for anybody who's using the door. So for the last couple of days I've been intending to do a bit of pricking out. This is the Celeriac Monarch I planted on the 5th of February and there's oh, a good dozen plants in here have come on really brilliantly and these are quite important to me because I'm really looking forward to Celeriac this year. So I'm going to pop these on into these round pots and I've also got some Calabrese, the green heading variety, that's the 120 day variety uh, that also are really looking like they need potting on. So I'm going to do that for both of these and um, then we should be up to date, I think, with pricking out and potting on. So this is when space really becomes challenging because in reality I want to use the bed but I've got a lot of ceilings there and it's just a waiting game now we're waiting for the last frost and that's a way off so it's going to get a bit cramped in here as we progress but that's okay we're used to that and we can overcome it but in the meantime, we just need to keep pricking out and potting on so that we keep on top of these plants and make sure that they're in the best possible condition before we put them in the ground. And those Celeriac Monarch are looking really, really good. So I'm very pleased with those. And the Calabrese potted on. You can pot these as deep as you like and I've tried to get the roots right down into the bottom and they'll soon perk up once I've given them more water. I'm sowing a few insurance seeds now. So, as you know, the swede that I've sown to date has not been particularly successful. So, I'm going to sow some old seed, which if I hadn't sown it now, I would probably have thrown out. So, there's no real loss other than a small amount of compost. And this is turnip purple top Milan uh, which is from 2016 and is of course a swede and I'm going to just sew those into a small tray and see if I get any germination and if I do then I may well use them but there's really no loss using old seed in this way and at this stage of the planting and sowing season um, if it comes up as more than I need, then there's plenty of people to share with. And the same goes for this cauliflower, which um, is the giant cauliflower, autumn giant. And I've got a few of these coming up, but I didn't feel like I had quite enough. And they usually germinate very well. So I'm going to give this a bit of a go. And again, insurance seeds just in case.
This is the bed that I took the strawberries out of and the strawberries now potted up into trays and doing just fine. But because I had strawberries in here so late, it meant that this area never had any mulch. So I'm gonna do some mulching now while the air's damp, we've got a bit of rain and hopefully that will settle in before I grow anything new in here. So this compost is spent compost from last year taken out of the tomatoes and the various things that I grew in the polytunnel. And what I do is I add chicken manure to it and anything else that I think will help, maybe a little bit of decomposed compost from my horse manure and basically mix it up and leave it for the year in one of the compost bins. And that hopefully adds enough new goodness to it to revitalize it. And then I can use it for a number of things. I've used it this year with potatoes and I'm gonna to top this bed off with this. And hopefully that will make a good growing medium for any new plants that I add. The other day when I was looking at the strawberries in here, I noticed these two plants seem to be dying back. And it's a toss up at the moment. There seems to be brand new growth coming from the middle. So I think I'm just gonna clear the leaves off and keep my fingers crossed. There's another couple looking the same. I think they probably just suffered from the move and we'll keep an eye on them but I am gonna take the dead leaves off. Yeah, when you get up close, it's very clear that all the new growth is shooting out of the middle. So my fears for these was not well founded. They do seem to be coming back nicely. We just don't want any of the energy going into dead leaves or leaves that are not going to make it. I want it all going into the new growth. Everything else in here looking good, including the plants that are just in the pot holding on in case I need them. All good. A latch on this shutter has been giving me some problems. It's badly bent, so I'm gonna remove it and see if I can straighten it up. Well, it was a great plan, but this screw here that I put in is a security screw. So you try and put a screwdriver on it and it just slips continuously. It's extremely effective, it means that nobody can remove the fitting, including me. So I need to get my head around quite what I'm gonna to do to get that one out. Probably a pair of pliers and a lot of brute force. So I think that's gonna to have to wait until I've got some additional tools. In the meantime, I'll close it up and it can just hold in place. I made this coop a good few years ago, but I made it out of shiplap timber and it certainly lasted well. So the job today is to get this filled with the chippings 
and get the chickens over. So we'll put firstly some diatomaceous earth down on the base and that helps to protect against the dreaded red mite and other creepy crawlies that might want to attack the chickens. So diatomaceous earth is a food grade product uh, but it's still not particularly good for the respiratory system I don't think. So I'm going to put this in carefully and dust it around. And then we'll get the chippings in on top. This is the area where the chickens roost and therefore it needs more of this than any other area. A small amount inside the nest boxes doesn't do any harm either. There we go. I tend to put virtually a whole bale into this coop and then every day we remove their droppings and it tends to last a good month or two. One of the things I really enjoy doing is taking these covers off. It makes the plot look fantastic after having looked at that black membrane for so long. And when I take these off this time, I'm going to torch them, get the edges, those frayed edges, all sealed so that they're in good order for when I need them again later on in the year. And hopefully all it will need then is just a little bit of raking over the surface just to break it up where some of the surface gets compacted under the membranes but all in all it's a lovely job for a lovely day happy with that and if we get a little bit more rain then that will just dampen down all the beds there's quite a lot of mare's tail in there which I had to take out quite a few slugs hibernating underneath the covers but we got rid of those so the polytunnel now must be looking pretty warm 32.4 degrees Okay, so we've lined the doors up, put a little makeshift frame around them, and we've got ourselves an exit and an entrance. Just a ramp to go now. 
I do think I finished. So this is the bridge out and I'll come straight out the back of the coop. So hopefully we can now get the chickens across and see if they see it the same way as I do. We'll see. Every year I plant my runner beans a little bit too early and I grow them indoors or in the propagator and they just get that little bit too high before I get to plant them out. This year I've waited and I've waited and my nerves just gone. It's time to get them in. Hopefully they'll be up and ready to go in by around the first, second week in May. And there's always a risk of frost in May, but I think I can probably fleece them if they're small enough. So I'm gonna make up my root trainer pot and get my runner beans in. So my runner beans this year are gonna be the same as last year and the year before and the year before that. Because when you find something you really like, you tend just to stick with it. And I've taken that a step further. I now save my own seed from my beans and they come year on year without any problem at all. And these beans are called Zar, originally from real seeds. And they're a wonderful runner bean. The seed is white and the flowers are white and they're an extremely successful bean. I'm also gonna grow this year just a few that came free on a packet. And this was on the front of a magazine and this is called Crimson Flowered by Thompson Morgan. So it's gonna be interesting. I'm certainly gonna know which are which because the white flowers versus the pink flowers. So I'll get on and sow those into the root trainers. I get the bean reasonably deep because I want the root to be nice and strong and stable inside the root trainer. And then they make for easy modular planting. Well, all that leaves is for them to be watered in. And hopefully those beans will be coming up soon. So this is Fluff, who's black, Sugar, who's a caramel colour, Lavender sitting on the end there. We've got Puff at the back and Pepper at the back on the right. And Fluff was badly attacked right from the beginning by the Black Rocks. And that's why we've built the run and separated them. So she's been the cause of all this work, but we're happy that she's happy.
Today's another one of those jobs I really enjoy, putting up the bean canes ready for a runner bean crop. And I was watching Liz Zorab, her channel the other day, and she was showing the various methods of putting up your bean canes and other structures, which was very informative. It's a great channel. I'll link it above and uh, you can go and see what she was doing and Liz has been a long time channel of interest for me and I've learned a great deal from her. I'm sure you will too. So today I'm going to get these bean canes up. It's a beautiful April day. The wind has dropped a little and this is one of those leisurely jobs that I just take my time over and enjoy the preparation. So this is my preferred method of putting the canes up. Last year I tried wigwams and as Liz said, they do blow over fairly easy. You would think they'd be very strong, but they do seem to suffer from blowing over. And this method, there is some risks, but generally it works well. So I put them all in about a foot apart in as straight a line as I can. And leaning out slightly so that when you cross them over to tie them, they're under a bit of tension. And that's the next step for me. Tie them all at the same point, hopefully in the middle of the bed. It does make sense to come around the highest part of the slope. And then it's certainly easier and less far to reach. So what I'm trying to do here is get some canes together so that I can get the ridge cane straight. So if we do every third, something like that, then I can make sure that I get it straight from the get-go. And then I can have all the other canes follow that line, which makes life easy. It's always a bit of a faff trying to tie them high up and we need to make sure they're nice and rigid. Coffee with the silkies this morning. Well, it's been beautiful out there today. And I've enjoyed putting the canes up. It's one of those jobs that if it's sunny, then it can be a real pleasure. If there's a biting wind or rain, not so much. But it's gone well. I've done all the 
diagonals. I just need to tie those into the upward canes and it should be rigid. Now we had some serious wind last year in the middle of the season. The canes were full of leaf and the wind got up really high and it took three of the wigwams that I'd set up over to about 45 degrees. It didn't damage too much, but I never got them straight again. So what I am going to do is from the ends of the structure, I'm going to run a very strong twine down to the base and make sure it's fixed nice and tight just to give it extra rigidity. And that should do the job. Cheers. Well, that's looking pretty sturdy now. I think that will probably hold up to most wind that we get. I've always been surprised how strong the wind gets up here and hopefully it'll do the job. April beans were laying down and I got the feeling that they weren't going to stand up unless I give them some help. So I've put some canes in and just tied them gently. Hopefully we won't have too much strong wind now. The forecast is it lightens a little over the coming days. So I'm looking forward to seeing those stand up and gain a bit more strength. pricking out and potting on just to make sure that our plants are in the best possible condition for when we plant them out. We're playing that waiting game still to a frost free period and some of the plants get a bit root bound and don't do their best if they stay in small pots. So it's worth potting them on if you've got the compost and you've got the time. So we've pricked out and potted on these two tomatoes that were in a tray of six where four of the spaces hadn't worked and the best of all Swede that were in a tray of 24 so we've got the best six out of that and over here we've potted on all the sprouts and the Norfolk purple turnips so that'll help a great deal those plants will do well now and when I get to put them in they'll have a really good start I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochen Val.